And so when she told me she was going to this church, I was like flabbergasted. I was like, what are you doing? Like, you're going to church? Like, what the heck? Like, like, you don't, we don't like believe in like the Christianity God. Like you're taught all the stuff that you, we read about in those books and by these psychics and these meat, like you're, you're like, what are you doing? You know? And she was like, I would get out of my car, Michelle, in the parking lot, my parking lot of the school shares a parking lot with this non-denominational church. And she goes, Michelle, I would get out of my car and I would feel I would feel like God was talking to me. I would feel like, she was like, I don't know. Like I, I would feel like God was, the Christian God was like calling me. Like he was wooing me to go there, like nudging me to go there. And she goes, I've never been there. Like I've never been to the Christian church. We only knew Catholic growing up really. And she's like, I didn't want to go by myself, but I was so desperate that I asked mom and dad and mom and dad agreed to go with me. So we've been going to church and I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. And I was just like, wow, like what the hell? Like I was just like, I couldn't believe she was going to Christian church. into this whole, since we're talking about suicide, into the part of my testimony that really becomes amazing. So, so in 2009, and I'll let you know a little bit about my husband in a little bit, but I'm just going to get this started here. So in 2009, that was the one of the worst years for me. It was one of the most terrible years for me. And it was because, um, let me see. At that time, I got married in 2003. So I would have been married for about six years. I had a three-year-old son at the time. I was immensely depressed. I had so much suicidal thoughts. I was um, battling depression. I was battling those thoughts. Um, I was full of fear, full of anxiety. And uh, when my son was one years old, at this time in 2009, he was three. So when he was one, my husband and I started to try to have another baby and it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. So at that like year and a half to two year mark, I'm like going to the doctor. I'm like, something's wrong. I can't, I can't get pregnant, which is really weird because with my first son, it just had happened and everything was fine with him. Well, comes to find out is that I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and with something called polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I was not, uh, my body was not ovulating in order to get pregnant. And so it was just very stressful. And basically I had this diagnosis saying that, hey, you are gonna struggle. You're gonna, you're gonna have trouble getting pregnant. You're gonna have to go on this infertility plan and cycle and go on these drugs and, and try these different kinds of plans uh, care plans to try to have another baby. And so that further threw me into so much of a depression because I really wanted my son to have a sibling. And it was just another thing for me to try to like feel better and get my, like in my mind, I was like, oh, if I can have another child, then my depression would leave. Then my, then my problems would be solved. Then my anxiety would, would go away. Then, you know, all these problems would get better and I'd be a happier person. It's always like, if you're, if this or that can happen, then I'll be, then I'll be very, very happy. I'll have joy in my life and heart again. And it's just a vicious cycle uh, with, with the whole depression and suicidal thoughts because the problem is without Jesus, you never feel better. You're going to always have the hole in your heart. Like you need Jesus, you know, you don't need all these other things to, to fill in a hole that only God can fill. So that's what I was trying to do. Um, so I, I go on this plan to have this, another child, I go on infertility. Well, by 2009, I had gotten finally pregnant after years and years and, and failure after failure of attempts to get pregnant. And then um, my baby died inside of me and I had to have the baby removed because it was not coming out naturally. So that was just so 
it was so terrible for me. It was so terrible to have to deal with that in the second trimester. And it, it threw me into even more of a depression. And it, it just, it, I'm so far removed from it now that it's like I'm so healed. But just to even think about the Michelle back then, it was so painful because I was in so much pain and turmoil, turmoil over that. And it, it was just hard for me to, to deal with that and, and then also deal with my three-year-old, deal with my husband and different things like that. And then I had a scare where I went for a scan. <clears throat> um, well, it was after I had the, the baby died that I was starting to have this really increase of depression. And I was like, I don't know what the heck is wrong with me, why I can't get out of this. Um, and then I think somebody told me like, go to the doctor and get a workup. Maybe your hormones are off because there was other things happening. So I went to go see this doctor and she diagnosed me at that time with an autoimmune disease. And she's like, oh, you know, this, is a, this could be a product of that. And so then she told me I had some testing done. And then she told me that the testing came back very high and you might have cancer of your thyroid. So you need to go get, cause I, you need to go get a test done. And then I had the test done and then it was like a PET scan. And um, it, then I had to go for a biopsy. It was just terrible in 2009. And it was so scary cause I was dealing with so many medical issues without God in my life. It was just so horrible. And during this time, I don't even know how long it was after that, but it wasn't very long after that. My sister had her first job um, she's a high school teacher and in 2009 um, it was her first year for teaching high school and um, she teaches science and so she had she's at this high school and she's parking and lo and book you know I didn't know this in the time period let's say a month or two might have gone by between this incident happening where I went over there and this is what I'm about to tell you but she had started that school and um, it shared a parking lot with a non-denominational church. And she's like, comes over to my house one day and she's telling me, you're going to think I'm so crazy. And I was like, well, what did you do? Like, <laughs> what did you do? You know, why, why would I think you're crazy? And she's like, um, I've been going to church. And I was like, well, why? Like, we don't go to church. Like, we're like, we don't believe in like Christianity, like Christians are hypocritical, right? Like I, we just like the deeper we got into new age stuff, like it was like, we didn't have a disdain or a bad, like mean spirited towards Christians. But you know, a lot of people in new age teach that Christianity is narrow minded and that they're really not open. They're not open. And um, the Bible is false and the translations are false. And I mean, there's a million and one things they tell you about the God of the Bible about Jesus, they contort everything and they lie about everything and they change the gospel so that it's a false gospel and you end up believing that. And so why would you go to a church? Why would you even do that? For what? You know, so, and you just start to think that Christians are hypocrites and it's true. Some of it is very true. There are a lot of Christians who are just big time hypocrites and they don't practice what they preach. Right. And Sadly, that's the case for a lot for some for some believers that just their sanctification process needs to be going a little bit better. But for some reason, they keep having to retake tests or whatever with God to stop being so hypocritical and doing whatever. But yeah, that I our our thought behind that kind of Christianity and and Jesus and what all you know what we knew about that. We're all false things, but we just were like, oh, they're hypocritical. They're judgmental. They don't accept you for how you are. Like you have to bend to them to be accepted and all this kind of way that you would think about it. And so when she told me she was going to this church, I was like flabbergasted. I was like, what are you doing? Like you're going to church? Like what the heck? Like, like, you don't, we don't like believe in like the Christianity God. Like you're taught all the stuff that you, we read about in those books and by these psychics and these meat, like you're, you're like, what are you doing? You know? And she was like, I would get out of my car, Michelle, 
in the parking lot. My parking lot of the school shares a parking lot with this non-denominational church. And she goes, Michelle, I would get out of my car and I would feel, I would feel like God was talking to me. I would feel like, she was like, I don't know. Like I, I would feel like God was, the Christian God was like calling me. Like he was wooing me to go there, like nudging me to go there. And she goes, I've never been there. Like I've never been to the Christian church. We only knew Catholic growing up really. And she's like, I didn't want to go by myself, but I was so desperate that I asked mom and dad and mom and dad agreed to go with me. So we've been going to church. And I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. And I was just like, wow, like what the hell? Like I was just like, I couldn't believe she was going to Christian church. I'm serious. And then on top of that, I couldn't believe that my mom and my dad were going with her. Maybe my mom, I'm like, okay, my mom wanted us to go to Catholic church, but my dad never wanted us to go to like, he's just not a church person, especially like, he had that mindset of, you know, church people are hypocrites, Christians are hypocrites, and he just had a problem with the church, you know? So I was just, like, really dumbfounded by her wanting to go there, number one, and then my parents taking her and going, and they started apparently going. She's telling me this and as if they've been going for a while, like a month or two, and she's like, I want you to go with me because this was a Saturday night, and she's like, I want you to go with me. Um... And if you'll go with me tomorrow, I'll like, I'll drive us the, over an hour. Like she's like, I'll take you and I'll drive to the church and then I'll drive you home, Michelle. And then I'll drive myself another hour home. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Like that is not normal stuff that my sister would nominate herself to do. But I was just like, no, no, I'm not going to Christian church. Like I'm not doing that. I don't believe in that stuff. Like, I don't believe in that. I, be you know, already what we believe. And she was like, I just am there and I feel better. I'm just like, when I'm there, I just feel like all of the darkness like starts to go away. And basically she was saying that all the demonic <laughs> attacks that she had been experiencing were quieter. And we're going away. And so, but we didn't have a terminology for it because we didn't believe at that point in demons. And so I was like, wow, okay, well, good for you. And she's like, I want you to go. And I was like, nope, not going. She's like, no, I want you to go. I'm like, nope, not going. And then after a few more times, I was like, she goes, Michelle, I just want you to support me like mom and dad are supporting me. I just want you to go. I want to just have you go one time and see if you like it. I know you deal with some stuff that I deal with. It's helping me. So why don't you give it a try? And, uh, you know, you don't even have to drive. So why not? Like, what do you have to lose? And then she was asking my husband to go. And my husband was like, H-E-double-L, you know? No. <laughs> because he was kind of in the same camp as my dad, Okay. It was more like agnostic where he believed like w what you believe is okay with him. What, you know, he didn't personally have a relationship with God really. I mean, he believed probably in a God, but he didn't have a relationship with God or Jesus or he had never really, like he also grew up in and out of Catholic church and he didn't really have much to say about good things about that experience in his life. And he just didn't really have a connection at all with God. And he was involved with, He's, he's uh, always had a gift for music and playing bass and he was in bands growing up and he was actually involved in a lot of satanic type of music and bands and dark, dark, dark places. And so he just was like a big no to that because he's just not a spiritual person. You know, I would actually try to talk to my husband about, you know, angels and like spirits and I would try to share my what I, what I would have with these encounters with these beings and whatever. And he was like, hey, I don't want to hear that. Like, I, listen, you do you, but I don't want to hear that. Like, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in those experiences, which I'm so grateful for. Because, you know, I tried. I tried to get him into, like, new age and, like, get him to, to like, read some of that. You know, I just try to share stuff. I remember we were coming back from... Destin, Florida one time when we we got engaged or whatever 
um, during that season and I was trying to like tell him about all the stuff and he I remember him being staunch to know like I'm okay if you believe that but that's not what I, I don't want to have any part to do with that and that's really a providence of the Lord protecting him you know knowing that we were getting married but protecting him from having that infiltrate his life and knowing that the Lord was going to deliver me from all of that so it's just so great but but anyways my sister invited us to church my husband said no at that time so I ended up saying yes I was like fine I'll go with you for support since you're making me feel bad and so the next day she did she drove like the hour and whatever it took there and that was my first experience in a, in a church, like a Christian church. And I remember thinking like my thought process, cause it was like a bigger church and it had like a two story, you know? And I remember, you know, when you compare that to Catholic church, you're like, this is like totally different. This is like, this is like, I've, ne this is like, I've never seen this before. This is strange and this is weird. And this is weird. Just, I don't know. And I remember they were doing worship music and everyone was sitting down. It wasn't like people were standing up. And I remember I was on the balcony, like looking down at people like below us and they were singing a slow worship song and I couldn't even tell you what it was, but there was this guy and he was standing up all by himself. I remember he was a bigger guy with a white shirt and he had his arms up and he was like praising God like this. And he, and he was like really like worshiping God. And I remember in my mind thinking, this is the strangest crap I've ever seen. Like, you know, with a different bad word. I was just like, man, this, this is weird. Look at that guy. Like, what the heck is wrong with that guy? Like, but then at the same time of me thinking something derogatory about that guy worshiping God, and the same time I had this other thought that says, but he must really know God because he's worshiping his God in such a way that he doesn't care at all what he looks like. Like he does not care what I think or what anyone else thinks. He is worshiping God and God probably loves that. And so I had these two thoughts, you know, and I was just like, wow, I wish I had an experience with God like that. Like in my mind, I was like, wow, like, I guess if this Christian God is like a thing, wow, I wish, I kind of wish that I knew him like that, you know, because like you looking at somebody doing that, well, God knows our thoughts, right? <laughs> so anyways, she takes me home and I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I think I went one more time with her, one more time, but there was a lot of spiritual warfare happening during the season. And um, I might've gone another time or two with my sister to, to that campus. But it just so happens that in this season, they, that particular church, I come to find out was opening a new church and it was in my same city, like 10 minutes away. And by the time I had gone maybe two or three times, I started feeling like God's presence. And I started, even though I didn't agree with Christianity, I didn't, I didn't like too much about what, what they were teaching there. I didn't agree with some of it, some of it, but I started to feel myself being a little bit more open. Like I started to feel like how my sister said, I started to feel really good there. Like I felt like I liked the music. I felt like I liked the message. I felt like it was really encouraging to me. I felt like it was very light. And, um, you know, God had us go to a place where we could receive, you know, it was not theologically deep by any means. And God has since moved up, me way up the meat, the meat, you know, level to from milk to meat or whatever. But at that time, I needed milk, and I needed, like, such baby, like, colostrum milk, not even from mature milk. And um, so, yeah, I was just like, wow. I, maybe, and my motivation in that time, you guys, was much like my dad in that sense, that I want my kids to go to youth group, or I want my kids to go to Catholic school or Catholic church. Me, I want my, my son, my three-year-old son, to go... Um, on Sundays because I want him to have good morals and values. So I know that if I raise him up in the church, like my dad, I felt like he was like that. If I know if my girls go to Catholic youth group or go to Catholic church, I know they're going to get morals. They're going to get godly principles, good morals and values, even though they they themselves don't really want to take it seriously or, pro or promote it like in their own lives. 
And I mean, I'm just saying that hypothetically, that's kind of what I think, but so yeah, so I just, it was funny because I had this conversation with my husband, like I told you what he thought and he hadn't been going with my sister and I the few times he refused to go. And so this one, so this one day I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to take, um, I've been thinking like, I just found out that that church that my sister goes to that I've been going to is opening up 10 minutes away. And like, would you want to come with me? Um, I think it's a good idea to raise our son with some, some kind of morals and values and like belief system that teaches good things that and how to be a good person and all that kind of stuff. And we can just like, he can meet friends. He's three, he needs to have friends. And I need to have people like that are in my age range. I didn't really know anybody at that time. And my husband was like, nope, nope, nope. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just go by myself with my son. So I started flipping. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. I'm going to go to the 11 o'clock service at this place. But I turn on the TV and I start flipping through. And lo and behold, this person was on TV, the pastor. And he was preaching. And it was a, it was an episode about charity like giving to god and my husband and i are both very charitable people like we love that like helping others and stuff and it was like a it was a very touching episode where people went they heard the word and it was like hey like if you feel led but only if you feel led like we have this group that needs shoes and they're gonna take if you feel led you can leave your shoes and put them on the altar and they're going to go to the donation for the needy people that need shoes. And it was really touching because hundreds of people were walking up to the altar and leaving their, taking off their shoes. And you would see them just flocking out of the church with no shoes on. And that really was touching to see. And like, I had never seen something like that out of a Christian church. And my husband, like, I, I was like, oh, this is where we've been going. And I just, I thought he was going to leave when this was happening. But he like sat down and he watched the whole sermon and he saw everything. And in my mind, I was like, oh, I wonder <laughs> what's he going to say, you know? And then after I said, you know, I'm going to go get ready now so that I can take my son. And he goes, okay, you go take a shower. I'll get our son ready and then I'll take a shower and we'll all go together. And so that was in February 2010. Um, so we started going there. But it was under the guise of good morals and values for my son. It wasn't to know Jesus. And so what ended up happening that was really interesting, and like I said, my husband was more agnostic, not having a relationship with any God, really, but he wasn't an atheist, but he, like I said already. And I don't know when, like even now I discuss it, like when did you give your life to Christ? Because it was like all of a sudden he changed. He was like, I can't even put my finger on it, like what month it was, but we started going in February and uh, by the summer, like within a month or two of going and just checking it out and then starting to go on a little bit on the Sundays, I was like, oh, now he's like, he's like made friends. What the heck, you know, like he's made friends and oh, now he's, uh, he's volunteering. Now he's on the media team. What is going on with my husband? This is not normal. And he started to have so much more patience and kindness with me and his son. And he just seemed like he was all into it and all of, all aboard this train. And I was so annoyed, you guys. I was so, like, I was going to church. I was getting fed. I was hearing a little bit of the word, learning a little bit. I was actually falling in love with Jesus because the more I learned about Jesus and who he was and what he taught, because I already believed in Jesus, but... Not that he was the son of God, but I was already, there were things about Jesus in scripture that, of course, I had never heard of. So I was already starting to feel like, okay, I really see Jesus in a different light, in a different way, and I'm really starting to fall in love with him. And so I would feel just so great when I was at church, you know, like that. But I still was very depressed and antisocial and just, you know, not wanting to plug in, not wanting to get too involved. I just wanted to kind of be on the, like, I wanted to go and leave. I didn't want to make friends. Like my husband was like getting all involved. And so I just noticed a big change in him and it was driving me crazy because I was like, you know what? You were like this non-spiritual person. Like you never wanted to talk to me about any of my stuff that I was trying to get you involved in and try to teach you about, try to get you wooed in. And so that we could practice stuff together. We could do this stuff together. We could have these deep spiritual conversations and we could talk about, 
you know, all this st nonsense stuff that I think is total nonsense and, and bad stuff now. But he was like, he had, he didn't want nothing to do with that. But now he's, oh, he's a Christian. And so over time that started to like really get on my nerves, but I was happy for him. Cause I was like, it's better than him not, you know, being kind of like he, he was before. And I guess he was just a happier person. Um, and then through the summer, everything was fine. But then the winter or the fall came. So like around this time, um, and around September, they were like, oh, we're going to put some women, some women Bible study together and we're, we're going to do that. So make sure you sign up girls and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, hell no. Like I'm not going to a Bible study because in my mind, I'm like figuring out what in my mind a Bible study looks like. And it looks like a bunch of old ladies with gray hair wrapped with her hair in a bun like this with no makeup on and long blouses and long skirts and just very like old fashioned and not into stuff that I'm into. And so I just had this preconceived notion of what Bible study was. And then the fact is that I had never read the Bible. Like I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know how to apply it. I didn't know how to read it. I didn't know how to open it up and find whatever the heck they would be talking about. So I felt very intimidated to go to that. But my husband kept pushing me and he was being so annoying. He was like, you really need to make friends. You really need, like everyone here is so nice. Because like I said, he's volunteering meeting people. I'm not even coming. I'm like basically coming, showing up and leaving. Like I'm not getting to know people. But he's like, oh, and, and in the meantime, he's meeting people. Well, their wives were like, where's your wife? You know, like we want to meet her. And why don't you invite her to the Bible study and all this kind of stuff? So I think on his end, he kind of felt embarrassed or maybe he felt like, you know, kind of pressured or he just he just wanted me to let go and get more involved or whatever. But I was like not having it. I was like totally not having it. Um, and I was starting to experience in that time some severe um, spiritual warfare, which I I didn't even know what the heck was happening to me. I was just being so bombarded with demonic things. I, I was experiencing really bad dreams and entities and um, feeling things and present, present, presences in my room. And I was just... I talk about things like that in that one video if y'all want to hear about that. But I was just having these different experiences and it was like escalating and there was a real war going on for my soul in this time period. And I didn't quite understand it. I didn't quite understand why things were so bad, but I like I would go to church and I would be so happy, but then I would have what was so much warfare afterwards. And, um, so finally my husband convinced me and he was like, please go, like you're going to, you need to go. And it's going to be, I think it was October 10th of 2010. And so I was like, which is tomorrow actually. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not going to go. And then finally I was like, okay, fine. If you leave me alone, I'm just going to go. I'll go. And so I signed myself up to go and then I just totally hated it the whole time. Like I'm, I'm leaving and I'm going and it's about 15, 20 minute drive away from me at this lady's house. And I nearly turn around like three or four times. I start hearing voices. I start hearing things um, like you don't, don't go, you don't belong there. You don't understand anything. I started having extreme panic attacks come over me. I started crying. I started feeling evil presence in my car. I started feeling um, like one minute I would have these th these thoughts of like, you're not welcome and all this preconceived notion of what will be like when I get there and how they're not going to they're not going to welcome you like you're going to be so embarrassed and uh, you're, you're not going to fit in like they're not going to like you like what are you doing like you need to turn around and like I literally almost turn around like three or four times and at the same time I would have these experiences. I would have this calmness come over me and my in my other <laughs> it was just the holy spirit and he would come and he would fight and he would just smack down on that thought enough to intervene and then i would hear just go you're gonna be fine you're gonna be okay you're gonna be fine michelle you're going to be fine and you need to go. You you need to go, Michelle. You're going to be fine. So I had this literal 
literal battle of demonic warfare going on. And I, like I said, I had no idea. I didn't believe in demons. <laughs> so this was extremely confusing to me because it was like a literal battle in this one night. Okay. So this is happening. God's coming in. This is happening. God's coming in. So I pushed through it amazingly. God, thank the Lord. And I go there and at first, uh, my first impression was like, I thought it was what I thought it was going to be like was nothing like it was. There was a bunch of young women, all mixture was young women, older women, middle-aged women, um, a whole bunch of them. They were eating, they were offering me coffee and food, and it was so nice. They were so sweet to me. They were very accepting and accommodating, and I had just never been in an environment like that before, so I was just shocked by it, but I was also extremely uncomfortable in there. I was feeling really uncomfortable but I was trying to ignore that. And I was feeling out of place for this, like I didn't belong there, but then God would come and be like, no, you need to stay. Cause there's so many times I wanted to go before it even began. Um, but the people would engage me and they'd be really sweet. So then I would feel kind of like, okay, it's fine. I, and I would also feel a little obligated to stay cause they were being so sweet to me. And then after that, we broke up in these different um areas where some went to different places in the house to have like a small study group and i think i must have been joining them on their second or third time like it seemed like i wasn't there on the first day and so i went with this one and i never forget her name is courtney and she was the group leader and there was about eight to ten of us and we were sitting in the dining room table area <laughs> and she starts she starts teaching about david who i had no idea what who david was and I didn't know where to go in the Bible. I was just so lost. And they start talking about David and reading the Bible. And I got so agitated. I got so agitated and so upset. And then I just started blurting out, I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in any of this. I don't believe in the devil. And I don't believe in any of this stuff. I don't know how y'all believe in this. This is not what I believe. I need to go. And I was like losing it. <laughs> and I was crying. I was just starting to cry. And Courtney was like, oh no. No, ma'am. And she just started flipping her Bible. She started reading me all these scriptures about the devil and about demons and about how the, I remember her saying the devil comes to still kill and destroy and but Jesus has come to give life and life more abundantly and she would she would say all these scriptures she'd throw all these scriptures at me you guys and in my mind I was like I don't care what you say like I don't believe that I don't believe that like I don't believe I don't care how many times you're gonna read to me in the Bible about the devil and demons, I'm not going to believe it. And I'm straight up having a panic attack and like, and everyone's just staring at me because I'm just like literally losing it. And you know what I felt in that moment, you guys, when I was experiencing that so much demonic attack, so much warfare going on, I knew in my heart, I was making myself look like a fool in front of these people. And I didn't care. Like I had no control over it. And I was just like lashing out with like vitriol and anger and they were all so loving like I want to cry about it because I was so mean and they were all so loving and they touched me they were like you're gonna be fine like we want you to stay Michelle like they were calling me by my name and they were like Michelle we want you to stay and God is gonna speak to you like you're here for, you're here for a reason and God is going to speak to you and you just need to hold on. It's okay if you don't believe us. Like, just don't go. And I wanted to go so bad. I wanted to get the hell out of there. I'm just being real. But just God kept intervening. And he kept making me want to stay. It was like this warfare it was just terrible. Just even thinking about it, describing it right now is like really making me think about it. Oh, and it was like torture. It was like spiritual torture. And I was just like, God, you know, well, I wasn't even speaking to God. 
but I just I just stayed and they were like just stay just stay and so they convinced me and I stayed and then after it was over we watched a video and on the video and I'm being Miss Recluse in the back like antisocial all the way in the back and they start they start the video and the lady is talking and she starts talking about the devil. Well, this, this thing was about David, okay? And I was thinking, they're not going to talk about David because really like what the only reason really the devil came up is because I brought him up, you know, in the little small group. But then the whole like Bible study part after I calmed down and I stayed, it really had nothing to do with, it was about David and it didn't have anything to do with spiritual warfare or demons or whatever that I can remember. You know, she was reading the scripture. Well, on the video, it starts out where this lady, she doesn't even talk about David. She starts talking about all the same scripture that Courtney had told me. And she starts specifically talking about the demonic realm and about demons and about the enemy. And she says the exact same ones that she was flipping through finding. And they all, and they all the girls that were in my group turned around like, oh. <gasps> God is speaking to you, Michelle. And I was like, <coughs> no, <laughs> like I was just so annoyed. And I was like, no, I'm just like, no, he's not. And it, I was just like, so like not ready for it. You know, I was just so like demonized. And, and so anyways, I, I went home and I went home with rage. I was so angry. I was like, this is the worst experience I ever had, you know, even though they were nothing but kind and nice to me, but the demons were working overtime. They were working overtime. They did not want me to come into the kingdom. So they were just, they were throwing everything that they could out at me. They could, they were just doing that. So I went home and the more that I was driving home that 15, 20 minutes, I was enraged. By the time I got home, I like bombarded my husband. I was like, why did you make me go to that? I am so angry at you. At you. you forced me to go there and I had to listen to a bunch of BS and I had to listen about a guy named David. I don't even know David. And uh, they're trying to tell me about the devil and blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, and you, you didn't even believe in God before. And you were not even spiritual. And I was just like yelling at him basically. And I was like, now you're a Jesus freak lover. I was just like ripping into him. I was just like, you're just so into Jesus now. Oh, I'm in Jesus, you know, like kind of mocking him. And I was like, I don't even know how you, uh, why you, why you are that way, but you are different, but I don't even know why. Why do you love, I was like, why do you love Jesus so much? Why are you, why are you all about Jesus now? You know? And he, you guys, he was so calm. He was so calm. And he was like, Michelle, I don't know how to answer you other than to say, I can't, I'm not like you. I don't have to know all the answers to everything in life. You know, you've been in new age a long time and you think you have all the answers, but yet you still, you're not, you don't have all the answers because I'm not like you. I don't have to know all the answers. But since I invite, like I will tell you this, since I invited Jesus into my heart and I have decided, and I don't understand it all, but I have decided to make Jesus my personal Lord and my personal Savior. And I have like repented of my sin and I've seen the way that I look in front of God. Like I have done that, Michelle, and my life has never been the same. Like I... I can't explain it to you. It's unexplainable. Now I just have faith. I, I don't need to know all the answers like you do. I just believe. I just believe that I'm a child of God and that God loves me and I have a relationship with him. And he goes, you know, God loves you and God knows you, Michelle. And he does love you and he knows how to answer you. And I know that if you just cry out to God and you cry out to Jesus, and you say, Jesus, please come and reveal yourself to me in a way that is undeniable that I cannot explain. That you would just reveal yourself to me. That um, he will. He will. You need to cry out to him. You need to say that prayer. You need to say that prayer. So that's what I did. That night on October 10th of 2010 is what I think it was. Before I went to sleep, I prayed one of these type of 
mean prayers to God and I was like if you're real Jesus and you're really the son of God and you you really love me like my husband is saying and I'm hearing and you when I go to church and I'm seeing all these scriptures I was like if you're really real then I need you to help and I need you to I need you to intervene in my life because I'm losing it like my life is terrible and I just can't get a grip. And honestly, I'm having a hard time believing in you, Jesus. But like what I know of you, I, I am falling in love with you, but I, I'm wanting to reach to you, but I can't let all this other stuff go. Like I can't let it go. Because you know I believe only in this for so long, like almost 15 years, and it's hard for me to, like I'm tormented in my mind. And so I said that prayer and I went to sleep. And in the middle of the night at 3 a.m., I woke up 